please give a warm MDRT welcome to Troy Hazard. It's about the 7,000 people that are in this room that's going to make a difference to your life in the next couple of days. Because here's the deal. The smart guys aren't on stage. Give me a step off for a minute. <laughs> I want you to acknowledge this for me right now, quickly. I want you to turn to the person beside you right now and say, I've heard you're the smartest person in the room. Go, quick! It's always good. You can spot the good mates, like really close friends sitting beside each other that have been mates for, for years, a couple over here. Bloke sitting next to another guy, and he goes, I'm not going to say that to you. <laughs> the smart guys are sitting right beside you. I want you to do two things for me. I want you to open up and use that people power to drive your business to achieve the things in life that are important to you. Open up, get real. Be vulnerable with each other, because that's where the learning happens. That's where the magic happens. And once you've done that, what you'll find is the conversations have far more meaning, far more purpose. So I put it to you that there might be something deeper that you can apply some of the information that you get over the next few days. If you choose to look for the real problems that you're facing, not the perceived problems. Now for me, the real problem was how I was dealing with the business, how I was growing the business, what I was doing to put us in that position. So I went home and I decided to have a day or two off just to try and clear my head. And I sat down and I thought, well, what's the, what's the real problem of me? What have I got to fix? And I worked out that I had a bunch of really bad business beliefs. I started writing down a bunch of things that I knew were stopping me from my own personal development. They were stopping me from being a good business person, a good business leader, just a good person. And I decided that I was going to work on that stuff first. And I ended up with about four pages of stuff. And I thought, okay. How can I wheel the list down and make it a little bit more easier for me to manage? Because I'm not going to work on all of that. But I might work on two or three things that I think I can fix personally. And the biggest thing I found that I didn't have was vision. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Now, see, we get up every day and we pedal hard, we pedal hard, we go fast, we go fast, and it's all about trying to do more and make a few more dollars to provide more for our families, to give ourselves financial freedom, to do something that we believe is going to satisfy us moving forward. But I didn't know why I was getting out of bed every day. I didn't have a clue what was really driving me because I'd lost my personal vision. So I set about creating a personal plan. Now, the reason I want to talk to you about this is that we always have a business plan. We have business metrics. We have things we do in business that we check off that help us manage or measure our success or our, our growth. But we rarely stop and do a personal plan. So I decided I was going to do this one-page plan on how I wanted to manage me to help with my personal vision. This was important to me because I figured if I could work this bit out, then the business plan should be easy because I would give the business plan some purpose. If there is nothing else that you've got from me in the last half hour we've spent together, please walk out of this room, take those business cards, have those conversations, write that plan, find those 30 minutes and make a commitment to make a change with the fantastic information you are about to receive at this year's annual meeting. Thanks for sharing half an hour of your life with me. I'll see you in Speaker's Corner. Thank you.